Welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids with me, Kat Hansen. I am bringing you this show in an attempt to educate you about the forgotten creatures and beings that exist alongside of us on this amazing planet that we call home. Many of these hidden beings are elusive and highly intelligent. Our ancient ancestors of North and South America knew of and understood these beings quite well. Many people are coming into contact with these elusive creatures and they do not have any knowledge or understanding of what it is they are seeing and interacting with. Seeing and interacting this with. oftentimes leaves these individuals fearful and confused. Seeing and interacting it's my intention to shed some light and share knowledge through this series. Seeing and interacting I'm going to help alleviate that fear and confusion. It is time for the light to shine through the darkness. If you are interested in sharing your encounter, Contact me directly at cathanson at yahoo.com, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids, with me, Cat. You know, I get a lot of questions about Dogman, and... I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it anymore, but it just seems to be like a favorite topic with people. So I'm just going to jump in here because I've got some theories and I would like to share them with you. You know, uh, what if I were to tell you that there is proof of dogmen? Physical, undeniable proof. Well, how and why would probably be your next questions to me, correct? You see, as an archaeologist, it's almost blasé for me to come across unknown artifacts hidden away, a.k.a. stored, in museums. I find them mismarked and mostly packed away and crated with small notes on them dating from anywhere from 20 to 50 to 100 years ago. Yeah. And usually they're very nondescript in their descriptions. You know, as an example, a small pot that has been labeled Grecian pot with a question mark just left there because no one bothered to take the time to really look at it and to understand that the markings on it were not Grecian in any way. They were Etruscan. So here sits said pot for 110 years, waiting for someone to come along, look at it, and decided that it could actually be dated correctly and that it is not Grecian. You see what I'm getting at here? There are many, many objects just like this that are found every day in our museums and in private collections. And they're found by students and professors and archaeologists completely by chance. I know, sounds unbelievable, but it really is true. What if I were to tell you that in a museum in Austria, there sits a wolf's head? that is unlike any other wolf's head in the world. Would you be curious as to exactly what kind of wolf this was? Especially since its head is enormous and is not the size of any known wolf today? Or what if I were to tell you that there is a pelt out there? Or better yet, let's just call it what it is, a skin from a dog man. I know, I hear you now. I hear all of you yelling at me, telling me, no, 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 cat, that's impossible, you're wrong. But what if I were to tell you that DNA has been done on this pelt or the skin from a dog man and it came back with some very, very interesting, strange, alarming results. What were they, you ask? Well, the results claimed that it was a mixture of human and wolf and pig. What would your next question be? Would you be incredulous or would you be skeptical? Or would you tell me 
but cat, that means the DNA is contaminated. Well, I'm here to tell you that such a pelt exists and such a skull, actually a head, a full-blown head, complete with teeth, fur, skin, everything you need for DNA testing. But wait, didn't I say that the pelt was already tested twice for DNA? And both times it came back as human, wolf, and pig? Hmm. Well, let's think about that for a minute. To, to create a chimera means that you have to have several different characteristics from multiple animals blended into one to create your ultimate creature. Have we not found that swine organs and veins can replace human organs and veins when there is nothing available? And we do this because they're compatible. So let's just say for the hell of it that somewhere back along the lines of genetics, also known as mythology by some, um, let's just say these people thought they were going to play God and mix the genetic material from these three beings together to see what they would get. Well, I'm kind of sitting here holding my breath because we do have stories and legends of something just like this occurring all the way down from the Sumerians to the Greeks and the fallen angels, of course. Kind of scary when you follow that train of thought all the way through. You see, at least to me, it makes perfect sense when they say that they got a mixed reading on this pelt, a.k.a. skin, from a very strange wolf. My next question would be, why do they not test the material of the huge skull, where they actually have dental DNA, deep root DNA, something that actually cannot be contaminated DNA? Well, there we run into that wonderful gray area of science. You know, that area of science that doesn't want to investigate anything they label fringe. But my question to them is actually, is this fringe or is this the world of woo calling foul on them? Now, I'm sure you're looking at these pictures in this video. And for some of you, your curiosity is definitely aroused. So let's just go on to the second part of this discussion. And that would be the strange look of said wolf. Please notice the hefty mane, or ruff, whichever you prefer to call it, around its head and neck area. Then, let's look at that pelt again. Oh, I mean skin. Let's just call it what it is. Let's look at the skin again. Have you ever seen a hair slash fur sample like this? Because I never have. And although it does seem to match another description of a wolf that walked on two legs and attacked people, it actually ate over a hundred, I believe, during its reign of terror, and that would be the beast of Javodana. If you study the descriptions of this beast, you will discover that it was described as being huge, with longish hair around its head and shoulders, with strange markings, it was almost like the pattern of a hyena. Its jaws were said to be overly developed. You know, they were gaping and were larger than normal. And then the hindquarters were very thick. Okay, all this is starting to sound really familiar to me. This description fits a dog man. 
Now I'm going to propose something even stranger and just hear me out. If you don't like my idea, I'm sure you're going to let me know, okay? But after all, it is just a theory of mine and we all know I like to make my theories fit mythology or vice versa. You see, we had a creature that could fit the description within human history. We called them buffalo wolves. And I can hear you saying it now. But cat, they went extinct when the buffalo went extinct. Well, I'm not believing that for a couple different reasons. Okay? A. Dogman is being seen more and more. B. People are seeing strange, large wolves that do not look like anything they've ever seen before in the wilderness. Uh, C. We have hunters who are reporting seeing what looks to them to be buffalo wolves. This would not be the first time that an animal has adapted and fooled us into thinking that it has gone extinct. When in reality, they have begun to proliferate and regain their numbers, and in some instances, surpass their numbers. Quite an interesting thought, if you think about it. It would explain the numbers of sightings of a wolf. You know, that is a very special wolf. Um one that walks upright and chases humans and you have to remember that these wolves were fearless and they did actually walk on their hind legs there's lots of accounts of this and there are even some claiming that they climb trees hey 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 sound familiar here yeah i thought so see i i tend to do my homework a little bit here It's just throwing up too many red flags for me as an archaeologist and as a Chatha medicine woman and a keeper of stories from my own people. It's throwing up some very strange red flags for me. And most importantly are the ones with the glowing amber eyes, these huge, huge wolves that are bigger than any other wolf that we had here, the fact that they could walk on their hind legs, the fact that they had the strange, strange footprints. They do not have footprints. Trackers used to say that the footprints that they had were not like a normal wolf. They were almost fused together so that it kind of look like a creepy hand. Well, would this enable them to climb trees? Why not? You've got Catahoula hound dogs that can do it. You've got pit bulls that can do it. Why not a wolf? You know, I'm not saying that they're smarter than these other dog beings, but I am saying this. What if they have evolved quietly as I said, and some of their offspring have been given a little bit more intelligent intelligence to play with. Just something to creep you out and make you think. It's a gift. <laughs> a gift from me to you. Gee, thanks, Kat. Thanks for giving me the creepy there. Yeah, I know. I'm not too happy with it myself. Um, that being said, I'm going to end this session today, but if you have any pictures, you know, creepy things, strange things, bizarre things, out of place things that you have found, if you would like to send them to me, I will look them over and make a video about them and tell you exactly what they are, if I know what they are. But usually I do know which cryptids they are. I haven't met one yet that I don't know exactly what it is. Um, 
And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And hit the like and subscribe button. I would be really grateful to you. And if you're interested in uh, learning Sasquatch language or any other type of cryptid lesson, if you head over to my Patreon page, I do give lessons. So I will thank you for your time and wish you all a good day. And I look forward to hearing from you.